Hi everyone, welcome. Hope you're keeping safe, hope you're keeping well. Um, hope you're staying indoors, to be honest, at this moment in time. Um, hoping by the time you're all watching this, lockdown is over. Um, it's driving us all mad, isn't it? But it is a must. We need to do it. Um, we need to protect the NHS, we need to save the NHS, and we need to help ourselves. So, um, hopefully, you're watching this back on the bank with wet lines and so on. Um, this video is a real quick video, hopefully, about how to refurbish what we call, or what I call, a non-rebuildable motor. This motor is generally the motor that's used in most uh, RC boats. Um, there are some, I know, that don't in regards to uh, some of the... Uh, sort of jet propulsion systems they're they're a little bit different they work in a different way i think they may still have one of these motors sitting on it but i've not touched one to know i am no bait boat expert please um bear that in mind i used to race rc cars that's where my knowledge of these motors is where this knowledge comes from as i've seen from a couple of boats that i took apart um there some of the things are very very different with a bait boat they're very bespoke electronics that are only for bait boats they've not taken the electronics from rc toys and put them into them but yeah the video is about how to rebuild one of these when they're making an awful lot of noise um generally when they make that noise there is only one thing wrong with them and that is this end bearing some of them don't even have bearings, they have bushes, brass bushes. I'm hoping most bait boats should at least invest in putting the bearings in the motors. They cost nothing when they do it out in China. However, bait boats being bait boats, they get in the water. No matter how much you pack them with grease, no matter how much uh, you, you try to protect them, you're always going to get a little bit of water ingress. The motors themselves may not always look like that. They may not have a shaft that long. They might be a lot shorter, and then they have a coupler that goes on. These ones come out of a new direction bait boat. Um, the reason behind doing this and why I wanted to, a friend of mine gave me his new direction boat that has many problems. One of them is a motor bearing failure. Um, the pods to replace one of these motors is 130 pounds. Now, I didn't want to do that. Um, I said, I'm pretty sure I could probably have a go at repairing a motor, knowing my RC car knowledge, um, uh, to which point I was. So that's what they do look like with a metal bearing. That one's not too bad, although it is failing, I can feel it. Um, it's not too bad. His one was a lot worse. This one has now got a lovely black rubber waterproof sealed bearing. So it's even future proof. Not only is it repaired, better than ever but it is also um yeah future proof with a sealed bearing so i'm going to film how to take the one of these apart bear in mind you do it at your own risk nothing to do with me um they're not hard but they're also easy to get wrong um they're very very simple i'm going to try and talk my way through doing this uh, i'm told you can do this on a wave runner boat uh, i know you can do it on new direction uh, motors because that's what I've done it on. You can do it on the Colt Ranger or Colt Scout Ranger boats which effectively are the same as a, uh, a Wave Runner anyway. Um, and basically yeah any what they call non-rebuildable motor that looks a bit like that um, yeah sometimes you'll notice uh, they have got a board on the end of it. I've already taken this one off to make it easier to make it easier for viewing. So yeah bear with me we're going to fly through this be a very quick video um, hopefully do a few more on this and how you can repair some of your own stuff I'm planning to do a uh, lithium battery one where yeah we'll see how we get on with that again it's something that we used to do with the toy cars so let's get cracking so once you've taken your motor out of your boat it will look something like that uh, as I say maybe slightly shorter staff but something like that and it may or may not have this uh, circuit board on as you can see I have already taken the circuit board off of this one um, because the next steps are what you're going to need to see so some rudimentary tools this hammer by the way is purely because I'm a worktop it's just to give me a bit of a flat surface because you will need to do some some light hammering to that end you will need a little toffee hammer. I call it a toffee hammer. Don't know what the actual pin hammer may be. I'm not sure. Uh, you'll need a small drift. Um, and that's it. Uh, 
not really a lot else you're going to want. So, the main thing that you've got to do, I don't know if you'll be able to see here, but there's four points around this can where the can itself has been pushed in to stop this plate falling out the end. Now, if you can see, I'm going to try and show you on this end here, you can just see where that sits inside. So what we're going to do is open up these slight indentations to allow this to come off the end. Um, from there, you'll be able to get to the bearing inside. Uh, let's see how we get on. So once you've moved them back, you'll see there'll be a bit of a clearance. You, you want to try and burr the end of the can off a little bit. It is no more simple then than just forcing the whole lot out. Now, this is the bit where you have to be brave. Basically, this whole shaft and this armature is fixed. It won't. The whole lot is solid. So what you need to do is move this shaft that pushes on the bearing on the end of this cap, and then that whole lot will come off. Now, you'll know when you'll get moved. There's no easy way of doing it other than just tap it on the shaft. One thing I would say, if, if you want to protect the end of the shaft, it is worth probably just putting a nut on the end like that, just to protect the end of the shaft for when you're going to tap this down. But as you tap down, you'll see this will all start to, this will all start to move up. Okay, so you've got the, uh, the bearing, the, the nut on the end there to, just to help protect the shaft. As I said before, there is no other way other than to be brave. Now the easiest way I've found to do this is to hold the can and just tap this on. If you've got a harder workbench, which is ideal, great. If not, you're going to need this. The one thing here is I know my phone's going to uh, bounce around, so sorry about that. But you do have to be quite aggressive. Once you get it moving, you can gentle it down a bit then. As you can see, I'll show you now, it's already moved to the end, you can see. It's all started to come up flush. It was countersinking. That one's holding it back a little bit. I think uh, it, it should push past that, so we'll keep going. Right. There you go. Popped out. Simple as that. Make sure you take the nut off the end. Um, once you get to that stage, you can be a little bit more gentle with it. Let's put that over there so we don't lose it. Um, again, though, no, still going to keep tapping. Looks rude, sorry. Um, well, I ain't sorry, but it does look rude. As you can see, it comes out all as one. I wouldn't try pulling pulling this bit off the end. Uh, if you do, there's some motor brushes in there. You can put them back on, they're just a pain. Your best bet is to leave that whole section as one. You don't need to do anything to this. Um, I would suggest just putting a little bit of oil in that end bearing. When I say oil, that's not engine oil. It's something called royal oil or bearing oil, if you can get it. Search on Amazon, I'm sure it will it will show up there. You will, um, yeah, that, that's it. As you can see, you can, I don't know if you're going to see down in there. You can see the bearing from the other side. Just a case of taking that bearing out now, which is really easy. So, bearing out. Same thing on here, that same drift that you were using before, because you don't care about this bearing, um, you wouldn't normally do this if you were just taking the bearing out, you can shove that in the middle and hit it out. The reason I say you wouldn't normally do it, it can affect the run, uh, the, the races that the ball bearings in there sit on. So I don't care about the ball bearings, so I can just knock it clean out like so. He says, we'll take the whole lot through, there we go. Comes out as clean as a whistle. There's the bearing itself. Um, and that's the bit we were trying to get. All you do, put it back together, the complete opposite. So let me get a new bearing. Oh, look. I've just found my friend's old bearing. Look, there it is. Absolutely terrible, that one. But there you go. So we're going to put a new bearing in. Now I have 
looked at various different ways of doing this um, and there isn't a good way, let me just get a scalpel and open this, sorry, there we go. Notice by the way, cut away from myself, health and safety, all of that. Yeah, there it is, nice new rubber seal bearing. We're gonna slip it straight back in the cam. Um, the main thing to do here is that it goes home. Uh, you'll know when it's home because it will sit right around that edge. So again, uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so putting the bearing in. Um, the most important thing to understand is, just like, or, or as I said, when you smash this one out, you don't want to be hitting anywhere in this bearing around here or around this rubber seal. That's a no-no. So what you want to do is make sure whatever you're hitting is quite wide face and it will actually get the entire surface, ideally around that outside edge. Um, other than that, it's just a case of when it's in the can, and it's going to be a little difficult because of the two magnets that are in there. When you pull it in, you have to hold it and just tap it down, but work around it. So go on opposite sides when you do it. And eventually it will finish flat so I'm gonna have a go biggest problem I've encountered with getting that is getting the bearing past the magnets because it will just grab like that um, makes no difference once you get it past as you can see I've used my thumb now hopefully you can see in there I've pushed it the majority of the way home I just need to tap it so back onto the drift sorry again about the camera uh, movement back onto my weight should I say or oh, my, my flat surface and then now with this, the important thing is do not rush it. Don't try smacking it home in one go. I would also say as well, I have tried, uh, not the right side, but giving you an example, using a socket that fits the right side. You still don't tend to get it fitting square on it when you do it and it ends up going wonky. You are far better just to use the drift, go around the actual bearing until, it, until it's right home. So. As I say, it's the complete opposite of what you did to take it out. Now, I'm gonna try and show you this again. Hopefully it will show up. Um, let me have a look at my camera. There we go, right, there we go. As you can see, the bearing's sitting in there, but it's not flush. Whoops, bring it up there. It's not sitting flush with the very end of the can, so you've still gotta keep going. But the important thing is when you turn it round, God, it's hard doing that from the side. As you turn it round, that bit has to sit flush. Keep going. So as long as you're hitting the outer edge, you're not going to affect the races. So you can hit it, I wouldn't say hard, but you don't have to, to worry about being too gentle. You're not going to hurt the bearing by doing it. Just having a look here. Yep, that's home. Right, so if I show you, again, I'm gonna try pointing, you'll be able to see the metal edge of the race. Hopefully it will come into focus in a minute. Sorry, there it is. The, metal edge of the, the very edge of the metal race, so the shiny bit inside, is now level. Let's get a different screwdriver and point. So that very bit inside there is now level with this outer can. I'm gonna spin it around and show you. That is all sitting lovely, perfectly home. There you go, look at that, you can see it lovely now. It's perfectly home. That's it. That's the new bearing is now in the can. There is nothing else to do to that. Other than put the thing back together. Putting it back together, as I say before. Now, I have found with the bearings that I've got is this shaft can be a little bit tight. It might be the first motor I've tried, I don't know. So you pull it in. Yeah, this one's a little tight as well. Exactly the same thing, you just need to tap on the end of it, and eventually you'll see it will come through. Now again, it's not affecting the bearing as you can see. Look at that spinning on there. Um, it has, looks like I might move the armature down, but that's fine, that'll, that'll, I think that'll go down. Let's hope it'll go down. Uh, we're carrying going. So that's how you get back on.
thing you see I've got the into there you, there is keyed if you look on the can they're keyed so they can only go in one way that's to make sure you get your positive and negatives around the right way on the magnet now that is pretty much home in there but it's not all the way down what I found is you need to get a socket on the end of this and then hit the rest of it home As you can see, the bearing's coming back through the end. Oh, helps if you get it lined up properly when you're doing that, sorry. This bit's a little bit fiddly, but you will win with some persistence. This is probably the most awkward bit of doing this whole can is getting this bit back together. Something I have noticed, and it's one bearing in mind, when you're hammering it back in, these magnets will move up. You just need to make sure you push them back in before they go and fill that gap up. They, they're not resined in. It's very easy to push them just straight in. Right, so, as I say, using a little bit of a socket, a little bit of a hitting around and things like that, you'll get, you'll get it back home so that it's sitting back down to its original position. This one's sitting a little bit long, wonky. There's a little bit tapping down on that side still. So we'll just come over to here. Unfortunately, you will do an element, a little bit of scratching and things on the can, but there's not really a lot you can do about that. Um, yeah, maybe a rubber thing or something. Um, the main thing is to make sure that this sits down dead square, which that is. Okay, that's it. Now all you want to do is make sure that the can is square where you bird the points up before because it inevitably does bend out a little bit where you move them out and then you need to seal them again now the easiest way to do that um, I found is with a, a just a, a flat chisel or if you haven't got a flat chisel a screwdriver you just want to hit it in there and it will burr that bit of metal over and just hold it in place so you literally just hold that on there give it a tap that's it there is no massive, massive strength in this because there's no real forces that are, that are, that are acting on it. Um, but once you've done that, as you can see, there you go. Bearing has been replaced. Nice new rubber black sealed bearing. I will demonstrate the difference between a new and an old bearing when it comes to noise because if you can imagine that amplified across the lake as your boat's going across it, that's the reason for changing this bearing. So, just wanted to show you what a bad pod sounds like and then put a good pod next to it. So, I'm just going to attach the motor on. So, you can appreciate that noise echoing through this out into the water. Uh, I'll show you a, a good one, a repaired one now and have the benefits of it, that bearing change. Okay, quick change, quick edit by the millennial. And uh, yeah, here's what a refurbished one sounds like. Now remembering this has got no battery or anything like that in it, so the sound does echo a little bit, but as you can hear, a lot, lot quieter. Okay, uh, I'm also gonna show you a good motor and a bad motor. Uh, this is a bad motor. As you can see that one it's not one i've fixed yet let's see if you can get that down there it's not one i've fixed yet the bearings all very very bad in that one and this one is a good motor massively different noise and there you have it fully rebuilt lovely and quiet there's two motors there already done i'll go ahead I glued it, I oh, won't glue, I solder, cool, there we go. I solder that ball back on and I've rebuilt two motors. I've got another couple to do. Um, it appears that they, uh, I wouldn't say it's a common fault, but um, just to clarify something actually, because these did come out of a new direction boat. Um, on the very first generations, because I've spoken to new direction on this actually, on the very first generation of boats, they went with the silver bearing. They realized straight away that it was a problem and so they swapped to the uh, the black rubber ones for the, uh, I wouldn't say the new boat, but for like the second manufacturing, etc. 
um, heard that from New Direction. I've only obviously seen the metal ones, but yeah, job done. Hope that helps you all. Um, good luck. Watch out for some more videos. While I'm stuck indoors doing nothing, I'm sure I'll be doing some more.